Hey guys, it's Nikki. I'm back. I know. It's been so long. But if you saw my last video, I explained that I'm coming back. The channel is changing. Things are going to be a lot different. So bear with me while we work with the lighting, while um, I figure out my upload schedule and all of that. Um, today's video is not about makeup. Shockingly enough, no. Um, Christopher and I have acquired some Grogu's, or the child, or Baby Yoda, as you may know him, um, and we're kind of obsessed. So, I thought what I would do is make him a little um, Mythosaur skull pendant, like he has in the Mandalorian that he chews on um, in Season 2. Um, spoiler alert. So, let's get into this. And um, I'm going to be making it out of polymer clay, so let's get started. So going into voiceover, um, I'm starting with the Fimo white clay and the Sculpey Primo. Uh, the Primo is in translucent, and I'm just going to mix those together. It took me quite a while to get these mixed, actually. Um, they're both really stiff clays. Um, this is sped up four times. If you're gonna be working with really stiff polymer clay, get a pasta machine. Um, not a new one. Don't spend the money on that. Don't spend the money on a clay rolling machine. Just go thrift stores and look until you find one. That is a uh, Nerdy Crafter tip right there. Thank you, Jackie from Nerdy Crafter. Um, I haven't gotten one yet. I have yet to find one, but I'm still looking. Um, I ended up mixing two batches and then mixing those two batches together to get a ball that was big enough to work with. And while I was doing this, I was watching Mariah Elizabeth and Nerdy Crafter. I love watching artsy stuff and craftsy stuff when I'm crafting. Now I'm just working on the tusks. Um, they're basically just long skinny carrots and I'm measuring them up and making sure that I trim them to the same length. And then I'm going to start on the skull itself. Now normally when you start on a skull you want like a teardrop shape to start with, but being as this is a fantasy creature, it's a mythosaur from the Star Wars universe. Um, I just kind of had to wing it a little bit with how I was doing the shape. Um, and I had multiple reference pictures. The one you were seeing is just one of those. I did have a couple of others, one of those being the actual pendant from the Mandalorian series. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just building out the um, cheek area. And it's a lot of smoothing, a lot, a lot of smoothing. Um, and she, it, you just, you cannot smooth this stuff enough, honestly. Then I decided I didn't like the shape at the top of the skull. I didn't like it the way it looked. And reference to the other reference images that I had, so I remolded that just a little bit. I'm gonna zoom you guys in here in just a second, and I'm just kind of working in that eye socket with um, one of my clay tools. This is a double-sided clay tool, so one side is smaller, one side is larger. I'm using the larger side for the eye sockets and then the smaller side for the nasal cavity. Wow, my lights really blew this clay out. You can hardly see what's happening. I'm, I promise I'm gonna get this figured out. <laughs> I promise. Now I'm just working in some of the details from uh, one of the other reference images I was working with. 
the skull ridge, the depth in the nasal socket, the ridge under the eye socket. And I'm just taking my pointy tool and working in some more details. And when I realized that I wasn't getting it quite as defined as I wanted it, I laid the pointy tool in and then started lifting the clay around the sides and then realized that from the pressure I was putting on the base of the tool, it was actually going a little too far into the clay. So I tried to smooth that out a little bit. Refining some of the shapes. Clearing away any excess clay that I don't need. Defining the tooth line. And then this is just some 70% isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab just to clean up the blending and remove any fingerprints, dust, cat hair, glitter. And yes, I know my desk is janky. I'm gonna be refinishing it at some point and that will probably be a video that I share with you guys. Now I'm just taking my pointy tool and defining the teeth. And this is kind of like a tiny little metal broom. And I'm using it to score the sides of the clay. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the top of the tusk. And I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid Sculpey. That way I know everything's gonna adhere properly. And then I realized that I needed to reinforce that joint. So I snipped off a tiny piece of wire to push in there. And then I realized that the snout was too long with the tusks. So I trimmed the snout down and I'm just going to use that tiny piece of wire to give strength to the joint where I'm putting the jaw back together. And then I'm going to cut a longer piece of wire and run that through the tusks and my, I forgot to film it, but I ran that through the tusks and then pushed them in as you saw me doing before. And I'm just trying to manipulate the tusks to my liking. Now taking two small pieces of clay, flat pieces, I'm going to create like a cuff around where the tusk and the rest of the skull meet and I'm going to use my pointy tool, the side of it, to blend that into the skull. And I'm going to do that on both sides because what you do to one side you got to do to the other. I mean not necessarily, it depends on what you're sculpting. But in this case, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other, because skulls tend to be semi-symmetrical. There's always asymmetry in nature, and skulls are a really 
great example of that, but that asymmetry is somewhat symmetrical, if that makes any sense. Probably doesn't, but that's me. Hey, um, thank you. If we could stay in frame, that would be fantastic. So I'm just going around cleaning things up, making sure I get as much of the dust off of it as I can because I'm still not sure at this point if I'm going to paint it or leave it bone toned. refining the eye sockets a little bit just because I wanted them to be a little more pointy at the top. And then I realized the tusks weren't going to stay up the way I wanted them to, even with the wire, so I put some aluminum foil underneath of them to keep them lifted. And now this is a pendant. So I just snipped the end off of a cotton bud and I'm using the same thin wire I used before to make the eyelet for the um, cord to go through. And I'm putting some liquid Sculpey on that and I'm just going to push that down into the top of the skull. And we are just about ready for baking. I'm just going to reinforce the teeth with some liquid Sculpey so that they don't break in the oven. And anyone who has watched Nerdy Crafter, you know the prayer. Dear baking gods of Evermore, please protect my peace from broken limbs, cracking, burning, and stop breaking my stuff. So this is gonna go in the oven. And here it is out of the oven, all cooled off. And because I had to use the liquid Sculpey to reinforce the teeth, um, it was a little shiny in that area. Still wasn't 100% sure that I was going to um, paint over it, except for the fact that you can see some of the support wire through the tusk. And I was trying to underpaint um, with my paint markers but I wasn't getting the payoff that I wanted, so I went and got the acrylic paint and the paint brushes and started doing the underpainting with that. Not like you can see what I'm doing with my big fingers in the way. Could we do this on, thank you. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just putting paint in the cracks and crevices and then wiping it away with either a tissue or a cotton bud so that it creates a shadow in those areas. Hey, on camera, thank you. And this can really make a difference in a finished piece. Um, if I had ended up leaving this bone colored, um, I probably would have watered the paint down a little bit more, but at this point I had decided that I was going to go ahead and paint this silver. And the only silver that I have is a paint pen, so you're gonna watch me struggle with that here in a minute. Almost as much as I'm struggling with the underpainting. I do really like the way the tusks looked once they were underpainted. I really, I mean, I wish I could have left this bone toned because I think that it looks really cool on the tusks there. Um, but the rest of it, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So my entire goal here was I was hoping that the underpainting would 
show through the silver paint a little bit. Once that dried, I came back to it with my silver paint pen. And this is where we start having fun. Not really. I got silver paint all over myself. Um, and it was a real struggle to get this to cover the piece. And it completely covered the underpainting, which I didn't want. But at the same time, I'm glad that I covered up the supports and the tusks. Can you guys hear me drinking? I just had to take a drink of soda. What did that sound like? This is my first time doing a voiceover with this mic. Was it loud? Was it ASMR? For any of the more difficult to reach areas, I did use a cotton bud to spread the paint into those areas. In the end, I think this came out looking a lot better once I painted it than it did before. Um, I do wish, I, I honestly, I think I might do another one of these um, and learn from my mistakes and do it in the bone tone. I think it would look really cool um, just personally because um, I identify with the Mandalorians. So I think it would be a really cool personal piece to have, uh, something that I could wear um, to match my little Grogu. But I think I might do another one and just learn from my mistakes and see if I can't leave it bone toned so that I can enjoy it in that natural tone. I know it's not perfect. It's not um, supposed to be. <laughs> um, this is literally just for um, to hang from the neck of our little Grogu. I'm not sure. I think it's going to probably be our Lego Grogu. Um, but yeah, this is just to hang from his neck. So I didn't, you know, I'm, it's not perfect. Um, this took me roughly five hours, I think. Um, but again, I know it's not perfect. I just, I wanted something that was rough and rustic. Um, I think it really goes with, whew, almost dropped it after all that work. I think it really goes with, um, all of the whole aesthetic of the Mandalorian and everything if it's more rustic than polished. Um, you know, aside from his amazing Beskar armor. Yeah, is my nerd showing yet? Anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, so this, like I said, is my first video back. Um, I really enjoyed bringing you guys along with me while I did this. Um, so like I said in my last video, I'm going to be doing more um, sculpting videos, more um, 
there's going to be um, sketch with me's, there's going to probably be get ready with me's just because. Um, when I do my art videos, I'm probably not going to come on here looking all cute and stuff. I'm probably going to have my hair thrown up in a messy bun and no face on. So, you know, a lot like my last video. So, anyways, thanks guys. I love you guys so much. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, um, over here. Um, and if you look over here, YouTube is probably suggesting something for you. And over here is a playlist. So click one of the links. Have a marathon. Love you guys.